This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. On November 13th, 1999, Lennox Lewis squared off against Evander Holyfield for the undisputed heavyweight world championship. Holyfield was the unified WBA IBF heavyweight champion, and Lewis was the WBC and lineal heavyweight champion. Lewis won the fight by 12 round unanimous decision to earn the undisputed heavyweight crown. This victory produced the first undisputed heavyweight world champion since Riddick Bowe vacated the WBC belt back in December 1992. So Lennox had unified all three major alphabet belts of his day, and he also held a valid claim to the heavyweight lineage. But his reign as undisputed champion didn't last long. Indeed, he was stripped of the WBA belt a few months after winning it. The WBA was upset that Lennox defended his championship against undefeated top-rated contender Michael Grant. The WBA had ordered Lewis to instead face their number one mandatory, John Ruiz, who at that time was best known for being blown out in 19 seconds by David Tua. Lennox made quick work of Grant in a devastating display of power, but despite the victory, Lennox never technically made a single defense of the undisputed crown. And we haven't had an undisputed heavyweight world champion since then, going on 22 long years. 22 damn years. Since that time, the boxing landscape has changed. Today there are not three, but four major world alphabet belts, with the WBO having made the transition from minor to major. On September 18, 2004, Bernard Hopkins entered the ring as the undisputed IBF, WBC, WBA, and lineal middleweight world champion. And he put his world championship on the line against WBO titleist Oscar De La Hoya. Hopkins won the fight by ninth round knockout, and he became the first boxer in history to simultaneously hold every belt in the new four belt era, including a valid claim to the lineage. This was, in my opinion at least, the tangible point in time where the WBO officially became recognized as a major world title. Prior to this year, we have only had less than a handful of undisputed world champions in any weight class during the four belt era. Jermaine Taylor earned the distinction at middleweight in 2005 when he beat Hopkins to win all four middleweight belts. After that, it would take 12 long years before Terence Crawford defeated Julius Ndongo to win all four belts at Junior Welter in 2017. The following year in 2018, Alexander Usyk defeated Marat Gassiev to win all four belts at cruiserweight. So going into this year, at the beginning of 2021, we only had four champions to ever become undisputed at any weight class in the four belt era. But 2021 actually became a revolutionary year in boxing history, where we had three different matches where all four belts were on the line. The first of those happened back in May, when Josh Taylor defeated Jose Ramirez to become the undisputed world champion at junior welterweight, which, interestingly enough, this made Taylor the second undisputed champion at 140 during the four belt era. Then back in July, Jermel Charlo battled Brian Castaño for the undisputed crown at 154, but that fight ended in a draw, so no four belt champion emerged from that one. And then just last month, Canelo Alvarez defeated Caleb Plant to become the undisputed super middleweight world champion, and that victory marked Canelo as only the sixth boxer to become undisputed at any weight class in the four belt era. Right now, Tyson Fury is the reigning WBC heavyweight champion, and he is also the lineal heavyweight world champion. Meanwhile, Alexander Usyk is the unified IBF WBA WBO heavyweight champion, 
And with 2021 bringing us three different divisional matches for Undisputed Supremacy, well, perhaps 2022 will be the year that we finally get an Undisputed Heavyweight Showdown in the Four Belt Era. It's been almost 22 damn years since the WBA unceremoniously stripped Lennox for facing Michael Grant instead of John Ruiz, and we have never had a heavyweight championship contest with all four belts on the line. That needs to change, it's long overdue, and maybe, just maybe, the alphabet bodies will begin opening up to this idea more. But I'm not holding my breath, because all four alphabet bodies suck out loud. We last saw Usyk in action back in September when he defeated Anthony Joshua by 12-round unanimous decision to win the unified IBF WBA WBO Heavyweight Championship. And we last saw Fury in action a couple of weeks after that in October when he won a war of attrition in an instant classic in his third fight against Deontay Wilder a fight that Fury won by 11th round stoppage. So right now, the best thing for heavyweight boxing would be a showdown for undisputed supremacy between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. But unfortunately, we may have to wait until later next year for the possibility of an undisputed heavyweight showdown. For starters, it looks as if Anthony Joshua is going to exercise his rematch clause so that he can get the opportunity to avenge his loss against Usyk. And then just recently, the WBC has ordered Fury to defend his belt against their mandatory challenger, Dillian White. Now anything can happen in boxing, especially in the heavyweight division. Could Dillian White beat Tyson Fury? Sure, he could. Could Anthony Joshua avenge his loss against Usyk? Sure, he could. Now, I'm not ready to make an official prediction on either of those fights yet, and even if I did, there's a good chance I'd be wrong about at least one, if not both. But if I'm correctly reading the pulse of boxing fans on social media, the general expectation is that most fans are expecting Fury to beat White. And most fans are expecting Usyk to beat AJ even more convincingly in the rematch. I'm not saying all fans think this, but by and large that seems to be the general consensus. That might be the best chance we have for an undisputed showdown in 2022, because then Fury will have fulfilled his mandatory obligation, and Usyk will have fulfilled the condition of his rematch clause with AJ. That would perhaps pave the way for an undisputed showdown later next year between Fury and Usyk, but that's not a given. Usyk may have to fulfill some other alphabet obligation that would ruin these would-be plans. If Fury and AJ both win, it still might help pave the way. That would be a unique situation where you had two British heavyweight champions squaring off for all the marbles. Now again, the same situation exists here if Usyk were to win. You never know what the IBF, the WBO, or the WBA Super Duper belts might have in store when they arbitrarily make up rules about mandatory obligations. But if Fury wins, regardless of whether it's AJ or Usyk, I think there is at least a pretty good chance that either of those scenarios would result in the possibility of a showdown for undisputed heavyweight supremacy. Now if White winds up beating Fury, that might well prove to doom a potential four belt heavyweight championship contest from happening at any point in 2022. Fury might wind up getting a rematch in that situation, and then personally, if that happened, I think the other alphabet belts will become more inclined to ruin things for us fans. So if White beats Fury, regardless of whether it's AJ or Usyk, I think this is the scenario where an undisputed heavyweight champion in 2022 is least likely. But who knows? Maybe White and AJ will wind up having a rematch for the undisputed crown. Wouldn't that be something? But the point I'm getting at here is I tend to believe that we have a better chance of getting a big-time, undisputed heavyweight championship fight in 2022 than we have had at any point in a very, very long time. 
one can hope. So do you think we will get a four belt heavyweight championship contest at some point in 2022? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.